What's up, Culinary Crusaders? Pitmaster Shane D here. And uh, have you ever wondered what it would be like to ask a, a literal music pro about music and how music relates to food? Well, I did that. Uh, this week we've got Eric Morgan uh, as our number one guest in the first in a series of uh, videos I, I want to do. And we're just going to call it the Pitmaster Shane D interview series. And uh, basically, I'm just going to sit down with some masters of industry, uh, not always food guys, uh, and talk about how what they do relates to food, the creation process, the inspiration process, all of those things. So check it out, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. All right, so let's let, let's jump in. Okay. So um, we're here in your in-home studio. Yes. Uh, we've known each other for, well, of each other, around each other for what, like 40 years? Probably, something yeah, crazy. something like that, yeah. So uh, for you guys who don't know, I, I, I speak highly of Eric as uh, my 100% my legit, legit, you know, expert uh, music friend because you do everything. Yeah. You you play a thousand different in instruments. I remember that as a kid. Like mm -hmm. you won every freaking talent show ever. <laughs> um, you mix. You there's yes. nothing you don't do. Um, not much. Not yeah, much. It's same thing. Quite a bit. Me yeah. in the cooking world, right? Uh -huh. You name it, I'll cook it. We ha we live and die off of inspiration and those sparks of mm -hmm. you know just come to you in the middle of whatever mm -hmm. you're doing. For me, I could be at a restaurant or walking down a an aisle. In Walmart mm -hmm. and go, ooh, that ingredient I've never played with that, or I'll taste something and go, this would play well with that, and that's that's where it's at for me. So, where where do you approach f from the music side? Where, where does the creativity come from? Well, um, usually for me, it starts with a chord progression. Okay. I usually will just be playing some chords, and I'll find something that I just think works, like like a hook or like a, or yeah, just just, just like... something, just anything that I think is interesting. Okay. And then I will uh, just start singing over it okay and um i have a tendency to just blah out my lyrics like right. blah 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 you know right. whatever and so you're trying to find basically melody at, finding the melody right. yeah that goes over those chords right and then just sort of building it from there um there's no right or wrong answer to that i know sure. a lot of people that start with most people expect me to say the lyric you know the way i look at it is like it's like what are we doing what are what i mean at the at the end of the day what is it you're trying to create and that's right. a song you know um the greatest lyrics in the world don't make a song. That's true. Um, they make a poem. That's absolutely right. And there's nothing wrong with poetry, and there's nothing wrong with great lyrics. I, I, I strive to have great lyrics, sure. too. But from my viewpoint, I don't see the point in writing lyrics if the melody that, I, that those lyrics are sung over isn't good. Right. So I want to have good music and then a good melody right. and then make the, um, the lyrics fit that melody. Um, if you've ever heard, if you ever heard some songs and and you, you just think like a, the word at the end of a line just doesn't fit. Doesn't it fit. Sense. It doesn't work. It doesn't, and it works in terms of, you know, the sentence itself making sense, but it just doesn't sound good musically. Right. Um, I'll give you one example: is the word better. To me, I have just completely that word cannot be the end of a line. It's okay. the ugliest word in the English language. So, so, better, you cannot make that sound. So, good. better man for Pearl Jam's a big, big thumbs down. No, that's <laughs> fine because it's not at the end of a line. <laughs> that word sounds horrible at the end of a yeah. line. Um, no, you can put it in a song. You just can't have that at the end of the line. But I, I take, I just for whatever reason that that really, I take that so seriously. I try to end the line, my lines with the simplest words possible. It's so funny because they seem these, to be smooth. Because like, for me, like, in in my world, if I cooked it, it doesn't matter how good it tastes. It doesn't matter who ate it. It only freaking matters if I took a picture of it and the picture was gorgeous. Uh huh. And you know, people will compose these shots and they've got peppers and radishes and so you're better but i'm like what the f is a radish doing with that? that doesn't even make sense there right. what does it go with that dish 
Like, oh, it had to have some color. You yeah, know? That, but that's why it's there. Mm-hmm. Why is better at the end of it? I needed something to end it with er so I can carry it out. Right, right. right. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. It's so funny. But, uh, And and of course I like I like a lot of different kinds of music. I don't really right. have one style, so um that is a huge misconception, right? Mm-hmm. It, so I know I cook a certain style better, mm-hmm. but I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of that style. Like I'm naturally mm-hmm. gifted at certain things, mm-hmm. but I'm actually probably a bigger fan of stuff that I'm not very gifted at, right? Well, I, I I'm kind of that way musically. Um I never really had well, somebody's got to sing, and when right. it's my project, it's gonna be me, and just by default. Right. There's uh, there, are there better singers out there? Absolutely, probably most of them are. But I would probably do a different kind of music if I could sing that way. Right. Um, right. You know. Well, you know, not all. You know, I, I love you know like uh, uh, like the guy from Caesar, uh, Sean. His mm-hmm. voice, one of the best voices in all. I love everything he sings. Mm-hmm. Because he could sing any damn thing. Mm-hmm. Guy from Mudvayne. Mm-hmm. One of the best voices, right? But he's mm-hmm. very metal. Scott Weiland when he's live. I mean, I love those voices. Mm-hmm. And mine is nowhere near those. Right. You know, the Eddie Vedders, right. the Scott Weilands. I don't have that kind of yarl, mm-hmm. like, right. guttural emotion that I would want to put in a song. Mm-hmm. Nope, nope. i got a very tinny Billy Corrigan horrible voice. <laughs> you know? But yeah. Billy Corrigan's made a lot of money he has, being that uh, squeaky kid from Chicago, uh-huh. you know? Yeah, absolutely. And he's made some. He's made some great records. Absolutely, uh, and I'm not disparaging Billy Corgan. No, I, I know love not. Smashing I know, Pumpkins. I know, but um, but that's that. That is, you know, I kind of work within my limitations. You know. Yeah. So, uh, much like you on the food side, creativity uh-huh. can come from anywhere. Sure, absolutely. And I can't count the number of times that one ingredient's made not only a whole dish but a whole plate. Because mm-hmm. then I'm like, oh, I've got this. So. I got the I got the mashed potatoes, you know that was my inspiration, mm-hmm. and that's the drums or whatever. Mm-hmm. And man, what goes with good drums? Oh, I, need, I need I need a guitar, you know, and I need yeah. you know I I need some horns or I need you, so know, you try to vocals. make the entire plate work together. I, it, where, where possible, it's not yeah. always, but sometimes it's you know it, go to a rub. Mm-hmm. I'll taste one thing and go, that mixed with that would make a great, you know, a fish rub or a great, mm-hmm. you know, Asian style rub. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're not always ingredients out of the Asian aisle, right? I mean, it's, you pull that from everywhere. And that's what I love about food and music. Mm-hmm. I've, I've had that happen. Um, there's one song, um, a song called Rain. That's actually the song that Gary Carter, the still guitarist, plays on. And you've got a really distorted guitar in there with a steel guitar. And I'm like, well, is it? Is it wrong, or is it just because that's not what you expected? Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, is, is it is it breaking tradition, mm-hmm. or is it actually wrong? Right. You know. And I was like, is this really a country song? Right. You know, so you associate the steel guitar with country, but it's not a country song at all. It's a, it's actually kind of a more of a soul song. Yeah. And well, uh, that, that that reminds me of you know James Brown when he was doing a lot of his stuff, and he mm-hmm. would argue with his musicians about changing time, and mm-hmm. like, you can't change time there. There's, you know, Bach or Beethoven said, you can't. They wrote these rules. Uh-huh. And he's like, but does it sound good? Does it make you well, feel good? Mm-hmm. And his his answer was, if it if the answer is yes, mm-hmm. we're changing time. Right. Um, you know, one of the wisest persons, and I'm sure he is not the first person to say this, but he said, you know, the one rule of music is if it sounds good, it is good. Right. And, um, yeah, same thing. If it, if it tastes good, it is good. Exactly. Right? And it's just like if you do it completely wrong, um, don't matter. I know that's just one of the great things about music is that I, a 12 year old who knows four chords can write a song Absolutely. that's better than anything I can do with all of my education and all my knowledge. Bingo. It really does, if you think about it, like, you know, um, you know, soul music, soul food, there's, there's a lot of parallels there, a lot Certainly. of similarities, and it's almost. You know, of course, they did come out of the same culture, but it's just, I don't know. I, f- well, I find that kind of stuff fascinating. So let's, we'll, we'll, we'll jump into that. Let, okay. let, let, let's kind of tie that in together. So okay. a lot of soul food is very, so it's it, it's very umami, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of that salty, yes. rich, rich food cooked for a long time, mm-hmm. most of it. Right. Always served with like a bright. Well, you know what that is to, to me in soul music? Mm-hmm. You got bass, you know, that bump and a bump and a bump, and then you got horns. Right. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah. 
that to me is so foundation music and, and some soul food. Of it. Yeah, they they totally go together. Uh-huh. And to me, when I'm making a rub, mm-hmm. I totally will get in there. I'm like, you know, my James Brown moment. You know, I'm like, oh, it's got some funk. It's got mm-hmm. some funk. I like the funk, but what does it need now? Right. What stands up off the funk? Oh, I need a bright. Mm-hmm. I need a sweet, or I need an acid. I need a sharp note there. Mm-hmm. The counterpoint, like it's not low unless you have something high That's exactly to contrast right. it against. Exactly and, right. and I think you got to do that in music too. Um, there's a whole, you know, you can read up on, on what they call pseudoacoustics, and it's our our minds, the way our minds work. If we hear higher highs, we perceive lower lows. Lower lows, right? We're me- we constantly measure the gap in between mm-hmm. things without knowing it. Right. It's the same thing with your tongue. Why, why do we put salt in chocolate chip cookies mm-hmm. so we can actually better taste the sugar? Mm-hmm. You know, because we have now we have a counterpoint hitting our tongue, right? And it triggers our brains to measure that gap and go, "Oh, that's that's much sweeter." Yeah. No, I actually put salt in it. I didn't put more sugar in it. Right. That's you know, but amazing. You, you've got to have the counterpoint. Uh-huh. So. Uh-huh. so we kind of talked to the kitchen while we're eating. Mm-hmm. Like, what for you? What make like, and you can give examples. You know, it's like some of your favorite songs, or what makes a great composition or a great song to to you. Well, I think first of all, every every ingredient serves the song. Okay. Um, I, I it, you know, if you've got a certain song that's just kind of a laid back thing and you put like a really shreddy guitar solo over the top of it, Doesn't it's just fit. not going to work. You want something right. that fits. And um, I'm just looking for great melody um, and, uh, you know, great lyrics help too. Uh, right. A lot of a lot of counterpoint, like you were talking mm-hmm. about. You want, you know, you want to have this melody, but you want to have these little underlying melodies, these little, right. fi- you know, f- fills and stuff to keep the interest there. And I mean, for me personally, for me that's umami. What you yeah. described is umami. That uh, background stuff that you're mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't know that it's cumin. I don't know that it's whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it's mushroomy. Mm-hmm. But it gives that that mid range ba- or that that backdrop mm-hmm. that everything else can can rise up right. off of. But I like. Um, I think my favorite songs are songs that are accessible that almost everyone would like, but they have something in them that sort of puts them up a. To another level, like right. something unique, like uh, we were talking about, you know, maybe there's a, a time signature change or a key signature change or something un- unexpected. Mm-hmm. So my favorite thing is to take a dish mm-hmm. that everyone knows, they know mm-hmm. fried rice, mm-hmm. and put my my take on it. So you're talking about you got a time signature, you got something in a song that's mm-hmm. that's accessible. Mm-hmm. Easily, what we're really saying is easily digestible, right. easily accepted. Exactly. And then we put a little spin on it, mm-hmm. and people go, "Wait a minute, that was unexpected right. at the same mm-hmm. time," and that's what made me value that. Right. That's exactly what. That's exactly what I'm. I'm. I'm going for. You know, just putting a spin on something is 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 so much more difficult than it's very easy to be weird. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you can. Um, you can just. I could just say, well, you know, this song's not even going to be in a key. We're all everybody's going to play in a different key, right? right. And you can call we're that all play sharps. Yeah, we're all, yeah, and it's just going to be um, chaos. And right. you can call that brilliant. Now, if you can get that to work, then you probably there are. There is brilliant. a level of brilliance, yeah. But um, but it's it's very easy to be weird, but it's difficult to be unique within the confines of something that people get. It's So, so we've identified kind of what makes a good song, mm-hmm. or what could make a good song. Mm-hmm. Where do you think a lot of people go wrong when they're when they're making music? Because I I know where I think most people go wrong with food. Uh huh. I think probably trying to do too much. Um, that at least for me anyway. That's that's what I hear. Um, and it's and so much of it's conditioning. Um, you know, you're we have just this idea that complex is better. Right. And I'm not saying I don't like complex music. You can, right. I, I, I do at times, but does it, does it need that? Does right. it need to have all of this, you know, extra stuff in it? So what you're saying, you approach a lot of this once you have something from mm-hmm. a, a retrograde perspective, i.e. how can I edit out, not yes. add to? Mm-hmm. So go, t- talk through that a little bit. I look at songs anyway in terms of you know four four elements maximum. Okay. Um, you've got 
the foundation, which is the, most of the time, is the bass and the drums. Mm -hmm. That's just your core. And then you have the rhythm, and the rhythm is just like the counterpoint to that. Like, yep. and it could, it could be the guitar, it could be the, um, it could be a keyboard, it could be um, another percussion instrument. It just, it just depends on. Right. It, it could be any ingredient. Right. That is actually right. The counterpoint. And the then room. the third element, it being the melody, mm -hmm. which is most of the time vocals. Sure. But if a guitar takes a solo, then that becomes the. Right. And then the fourth element is what I call just fills. There's 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 moments when you know when you're not singing, you mm -hmm. know could the guitar do a little something in that to make it more interesting or could or the, do you let it breathe or do you let it breathe, and there's there's neither one of those are are right answers. They both are right answers. Right. It just depends on what it depends on what you want. For instance, if you had a piano and they're playing like really low notes, it's probably going to get in the way of the bass. Right. You know, and you want the bass to have their space on the stage. And you know the guitar to have its its area, mm -hmm. and um, that's one thing when you're mixing, is you're trying to find a way to make a lot of different things work together. That's what mixing is really, trying to make everything fit. It's funny because I say there's a Jedi mind trick that happens in food, mm -hmm. and it's when on your tongue, and you, it can't all be at the same time mm -hmm. because it it's a it's a mind f. Mm -hmm. But on your tongue, as you're eating something, you think, is it sweet? Is it salty? Mm -hmm. Is it spicy? You know, right. it, it, all, the, all those elements, is it sour? Is uh -huh. it, when you can hit all of that mm -hmm. at different points in a bite or a mm -hmm. chew, because mm -hmm. not all of them can be in the same, you're not going to get those all at once. You right. can't have them. Right. Your brain actually can only process one to two at a time. Right. So it's Just exactly like with the elements of the song, you know, where... You know, anything more than those four elements. It's a waste. Yeah, you're probably not going to hear it. Fusing I like what you talk about coming in a, in kind of a retrograde mm -hmm. because that's a lot of where I think most people lose recipes and they lose mm -hmm. sauces and rubs in particular mm -hmm. because we, we always approach it from I can always add, I can always add, I can always add. But yes. once you've added, it's not coming out. Right. So mm -hmm. you've got to know when to stop. You've got to know yes. when to let it breathe. Mm -hmm. And what you'll find is that these guys is they'll get to a certain point and they've lost it. It mm -hmm. just it, it went muddy on them. Right. The clarity the clarity of the herbs that was there that they were liking. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I'm gonna try to amp that up with a little more of this. Now all of a sudden it's salty. Well, yes. how, shit. How do I save it? Right. I gotta add some sweet. I, I'll get the sweet to dial down the salt. Right. Well, now you've just trollop tromped all over Absolutely. the herbs. Absolutely. With all of that. And they're unwilling to just start over, mm -hmm. to take the mix back to zero. Yes, and rebuild it. And right. go, okay, when I get here, mm -hmm. I've got to stop. Right. Yep. I see that. I see that all the time. You know, you're just you're. Oh, always... you got muddy sounds. You got muddy flavors. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about the brilliance of the Siamese Dream album was mm -hmm. it's got there's one couple songs that have thirty guitar tracks and they still right. worked. Yeah, that's brilliant. You yeah, it get is muddy. No, it there's get muddy brilliance in it. However, I think. Mm -hmm. Most people or most bands, that would have been an absolute shit show. And it would have just been muddy. Yeah, absolutely. No. I get crap for this podcast because, or this this YouTube channel because I want it to be a direct conversation. Mm -hmm. I never want to run more than two cameras mm -hmm. ever. Right. They're like, yeah, but I can't see you do this, this, and this. I'm like, mm -hmm. you don't need to. Yeah. This is a conversation between me and you. Right. I want to talk to you about food. Right. I don't want to necessarily show you everything I did, uh -huh. but I want to talk about the pitfalls mm -hmm. of what happened. Right. And where you can avoid them. Mm -hmm. I want the conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't want 37 layers of crap to edit together. No. You no. know, it's, it's crazy. And, you know, in today's where, where tracks are unlimited, you know. Literally. Literally. You know, um, and, and I'm not, I don't know, I'm not thinking of people that aren't into recording. I'm not talking about 24 tracks or even 48. I mean, like... Somebody was saying the other day that they got one that had 192. Wow. And it's like, I can't even... You can't hear that. No. But it's just it's just that, like, the, the, you record one guitar part and you think, well, that's pretty good, but I'll try this one. Yeah. But at it, some point, someone's going to have to make a decision and right. cut that down and yep. say, okay, what, what stays and what goes? It, it's funny. When I do a rub, mm -hmm. and I'll use rubs especially because mm -hmm. they're, they're a little easier to kind of, kind of define. Mm-hmm. I will self. I get to a point where I look at. I'll ha I always have a notepad. Mm -hmm. Once I get to about the twelfth line of adding stuff, mm -hmm. I'm like, "You got to stop." 
Yeah. I'm like, is it a good rub now it's because kind of a you went point to of diminishing returns? Yeah, absolutely, it's point mm -hmm. of diminishing returns because mm -hmm. I'm going to add something that covered up line two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add something at line 15 that destroyed line seven. Mm -hmm. There's no way I can balance that where you can taste it. And I've mm -hmm. got a good palate, mm -hmm. and if I know I've got a good palate and I can't discern it, mm -hmm. and I'm the guy who created it, right? No way you're picking it up, right? No way, right? So I may as well go up top, mm -hmm. scratch two or three of those out and keep this to about 15 ingredients, 12 mm -hmm. to 15. Mm -hmm. And if I can't get it done in those, mm -hmm. I need, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I need to approach this a different way. Right. You want everything to kind of be equal, I mean, in a band, and you're like, everybody should have the same volume, and, and that sounds... But they can't. But they can't. It sounds great in, in, in principle, right. but it, it just does not work. Well, so, so here's a great example Everybody sounds bad. Right, you know? Salt wants to, do, you know, in your rub, but I, salt wants to be a tablespoon. Yes. Sugar wants to be a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. Pepper wants to be a tablespoon. Uh, rosemary wants to be a tablespoon. Right. Well, the problem is, is they're all a tablespoon. It's mud. Mm -hmm. What, what's, what are you really trying? Is this an herby rub? Mm -hmm. Then, then your rosemary needs to be two right. tablespoons. Mm -hmm. You know, does the salt support the rosemary or to get out in front of it? Well, maybe mm -hmm. salt needs to be half a tablespoon. Right. Exactly. And that's um, a, a parallel to mixing. You have to, you know, I kind of think of it as like, you know, you're building a foundation like a house. You know, you got to have a solid foundation. If you don't, nothing you build on top of it right. is going to hold. But you also have to decide what's the most important element and Absolutely. emphasize it. And in the context of most, um, most music, most pop music anyway, um, the vocal most of the time is probably going to be the main sure. element. Sure. At the end of the day, what are we talking about? It's balance. Right. Absolutely. We're, you know, uh, my favorite guitar players aren't the ones that play 900 notes a minute. No, me neither. They're, me they're neither. the ones that know when to make you beg for the next note. Exactly. To leave enough air for you to go, come on, just yes. play, play again. You know? Yeah. The, I mean, the David, like, no one sparks more emotion for me than, like, a David Gilmore and, yeah, sure. and guys like that. Because they are so good at putting that pregnant pause in Yeah. There, you know? Absolutely. And, um, you know, and I think we talked about this earlier, you know, off camera, but, you know, it's, it's really, I've heard that you know, people say that the space between the notes is just as important as the notes themselves. And, yeah. Um, it's the same thing in rub. Mm -hmm. You know, I put 400 needs to herbs breathe. in there, but yeah, but I can only taste two, bro. Right. Did So the other 398 were wasted. It, yeah, really. You yeah. know, you, you drove up the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're having to pay for that in every ounce and everything you do and mm -hmm. every time you sell. You know, uh, one of our, you know, off camera we talked about, I almost got in a fight at a huge festival because a guy was mad at me because I thought I was keeping some family secret on what our pulled pork recipe was when I told mm -hmm. him, I just put salt on it, and mm -hmm. then we smoke it, mm -hmm. and then we serve it to you. Yeah. And he, he basically, he called me an asshole in front of everybody, man. <laughs> it was like, I, you don't have to be that way, bro. I was, I wouldn't try to steal nothing. Right. I just wanted to know. And I'm and like, dude, like, I, I just told, told you. the truth, yeah. And, and I, I was, I took him around back where the cookers are. Mm -hmm. And we buy, you know, when we do a big event like that, we'll buy a case, and it's in one-pound boxes of salt. I'm like, there it is, dude. Mm -hmm. It's not what's on it mm -hmm. a lot of times. Mm -hmm. What I allowed you to taste was beautifully smoked pork mm -hmm. with a little bit of salt to amplify all that porky goodness. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't do mm -hmm. was get in your tongue's way. Right. And right. you made it good because you were able to process everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. That it's the same thing for a song. You yeah, know? yeah. I'm trying to to not do too much, but um, and 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 don't don't mistake doing too much for for being for complexity. I mean, nothing against right. complexity. You know, it's just knowing where to put it in. Right. But right. I think more stuff is more stuff. Sometimes. Yes. More stuff with a purpose and a plan. That's complex. Right. Exactly. I'm really creative when I'm writing stuff, recipes or whatever mm -hmm. it is, uh, sauces, rubs. I got to be in the right space to receive mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I'm so afraid that someday someone's just like up above me is going to turn off the faucet, and it scares the shit out of me. Oh, you're not you're not the only person that, that that's ever said that. Yeah, I, promise. I mean, most probably more people than not yeah. agree with you on that. Yeah, I, I feel when I'm at my best, like 
something's going on and I'm hearing like you're a vehicle almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 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 the medium of which it ends up mm -hmm. on the paper, but I'm not always the one in control. Right. And it's like this you're gonna put this in here and you're like, that didn't even make sense to me and it's like just do it and it's like, right. Okay, fine. Right. And you do it and you're like, Holy crap, that's amazing. Exactly. But if but I'm ever so afraid that, that if I don't stay in tune to that creative or art, mm -hmm. artistic side of myself it get cut off. No, I'm 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 right there with you. I totally understand. Um, because, gosh, I mean, you you it is, it is. It's kind of it's kind of scary to think about. Very that. scary. Well, you've like, now built a whole livelihood on it. Mm-hmm. You know, what yeah. if tomorrow you go deaf, or you know, I think uh, about it, what if tomorrow I can't taste. Yeah, I mean, it, you think about like what if the what if the next song sucks, and well, then you think, well, and, and then you okay. think, and then you think. What if the song, and then you start, you know, going backwards. Yeah. Like, what if the song that I've already done sucks? Sucked. And it probably did. <laughs> well. And that's where I get to it all the time. It's like, it, I, I have a lot of pressure with sauces and rum. Mm -hmm. Because now I've won so many awards with them. Mm -hmm. Like, the next one, it's it's like you're, you know, coming out with your sophomore album, right? It's mm -hmm. like, well, you did great for that freshman project. Yeah, the dreaded second lucky. album. Yeah. Right. So your second, third, fourth, fifth album. Mm-hmm. Now I worry when I release anything, there's so much pressure mm -hmm. because it's got to be the best. Right. You know, and I, and I put that all on myself. Mm -hmm. And it drives my fans crazy mm -hmm. because, like, the Beef Rub project I did for mm -hmm. Gorilla, I delayed it like 10 months. Really? Because it was good. Mm -hmm. But just wasn't but it the wasn't, level. But it wasn't where I needed it to be right. to go, that's a home run. Right. Well, I mean, I really appreciate you taking time to do this. Yes, I, it's totally been tough for us to get this to work out. It is, out. yeah. We Too tried for people. about a month or two, yeah. but that's, it's all good. We'll do it again sometime. Um, I really appreciate you you taking the time. Oh, man. Anyone that. willing to break out the Pro Tools and do the sliders to demonstrate stuff, I that's really cool. Yeah, so. I had a great time. I appreciate it. All right, guys. So I'm Pitmaster Shade D. Uh, this is the first in my series of interviews that we're doing and I thought we'd start it off big right don't ever do anything small so right. thanks for checking it out um, as always you know where to get me at Shady BBQ and all social media and pitmaster at gorillagrills.com or Shane at drapersbbq.com we'll catch you next time